This is directed by Lin Manuel Miranda, and uh, it stars Andrew Garfield as John, uh, based on Jonathan Lawson's largely autobiographical show about his own failure to get his sort of futuristic sci-fi inflected musical superbia off the ground. And as we meet our central character, he is in the week leading up to his birthday. But there are a number of clocks ticking. One of them is that um, uh, a young woman acquaintance of his has an offer of a job. He has to decide what to do about it. A a male acquaintance of his is saying, look, you need to come and work for me because actually you're not going to make it in this thing. And I've got an advertising opening in which, you know, you might be able to make it. He has got a performance coming up, which is a showcase, uh, a workshop uh, for his uh, superbia musical, which he thinks is going to be the be all and end all of everything. And he thinks time is running out. And so the whole that's why the tick, tick, boom, that everything is kind of the clock is ticking and he is running out of time. Um, Garfield, it, Andrew Garfield, Andy, mate, 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 yes, as you called him, um, or as he called you. Uh, it's interesting because not know that thing about, you know, can you sing? I don't know how long have you got a year? In that case, I can sing. There's no part of me watching this that would have thought that he hadn't been doing this since he was born. I mean, he does throw himself into the musical theatre role with the gusto of somebody who has been doing, you know, like as a kid was probably doing, you know, musicals on stage. Um, And that is both a good and a bad thing. One of the problems for me is that the, the film feels very much like it is projecting to the back of the theatre. I know everyone always cites the, you know, the Michael Caine thing about their screen acting and their stage acting, and there's a lot of kind of sniffiness about whether or not that's correct. But it is true that there are two different registers. Now, one of the things with Tick, Tick, Boom is that it has stuff that is on stage. It has a sort of, you know, a, a sort of staged musical section, and then it has the more naturalistic sections. In, I mean, naturalistic within the realms of being within a musical. In fact, there is one musical number which interestingly straddles that divide between are they breaking into song out of context or is he actually playing the song in the room and everyone's kind of applauding the fact that he's doing it completely? Is it diegetic or exegetic? I always get... You know what I mean? Is it, is it's it, your it, sentence. You finish it. Is it... A, wow. Well, I don't know the wow. answer. I don't okay, know fine. the answer to your own logic. Okay, whether whether the music is within the world of the film or within the world of a film which you yeah. in which you can break into song. Um, the other thing is that the clock is ticking on the fact that he has to write a big song for the musical. He's been told that he is missing a song at the end of a crucial act that is the sort of turning point. And he says, well, I don't have it. And he said, no, you do. You really need it. So part of the story is leading up to the creation of the big song. And I must say that there were moments that I really expected that when we got to the big song, it was going to be the spam a lot. This is the song that goes like this, because it it's kind of so much within that musical theatre borderline cliche world. All that said, the story is, you know, it's a celebration of an extraordinary talent. There is, as you said, this you know underlying tragedy that exactly the moment that Rent actually finally breaks out, that that is the end of the story, which obviously adds an, an incredible poignancy to the fact that he's he's anguished about turning thirty, and because you know, and you're thinking, well, that's it, it that, that's that's a, that's a quarter life crisis. That's mm-hmm. not a midlife crisis. That's a quarter life crisis, and I think therefore it draws you into that well. There is, uh, you know, as he said, the, the whole thing plays out against the backdrop uh, of AIDS, which is dealt with in a totally sympathetic, also matter of fact way. That it's, you know, it's part of life and it is there, and it's, you know, and it, it, they don't, it's not made an issue of, but it's very, very important, particularly at that time. And then there's, there were times that it reminded me of the of the screen adaptations of Boys in the Band. You know, I love Boys in the Band, but it's a, it's a great stage play. And neither of the films, whether it's the Friedkin film, which I like, or the more, the more recent uh, you know, Netflix version, it is, it is something that exists on stage and film versions of it are always film, film versions of it. And I saw it on stage actually a few years ago and I, I just loved it. But that forced sassiness, which doesn't feel forced on stage, can feel forced on screen. So overall, I thought this was fine. I didn't think it was a remarkable screen musical. I thought it did look like a stage production. But you'd have to be pretty hard-hearted not to 
I mean, I don't know the songs. I hadn't heard the songs before, but I've just heard that, you know, uh, 30, 90 birthday song twice now. And it is, a, it's an earworm. It's, you know, it's, there's a reason why Stephen Sondheim thought mm. you've got talent. There's something going on there. So I thought it was fine. I didn't love it. I think you liked it more than I did. I think I got into, I th look, if you like musical theatre, if musical theatre is your world, you will absolutely love it from, from, from the start, right. I think. I, and you'll probably know it. Yes, and you'll probably know it. I did not know it, don't know any of the songs. It took me most of the, I think, the first half of the movie to get into it, and I think it. You okay. know, I enjoyed it more towards the end. Yeah. Because there is something very unusual about that world of musicals where two people would be sitting around a table having a chat. And, and then suddenly, suddenly, and suddenly one would Why are you singing? Up. Why are you singing? Just carry on the conversation. That's what I, I always think. But it's a musical. That's how it works. Nigel Floyd always complained about that. He said, well, why do they burst into song in musicals? That's why Nigel Floyd likes cabaret, because the songs are on stage. But is it Michael Palin to Terry Jones in Holy Grail? He says, cut that out. You're, <laughs> you're not singing while I'm here. Um, anyway, so I'm, so I'm not really immersed in that world, but I thought it was, a, an, it was quite an interesting period piece, and Garfield is always very watchable. And he is... Don't you think he behaves like somebody who's been doing musical theatre all his life, which was why it was fascinating when that thing about can you sing, how long yes. you've got a year, then yes, because he does seem to the manner born when it comes to that.